You know, I woke up this morning just really wondering what 8 times 7 is. Thankfully, after a second passed, I realized 8 times 7 is 56, and it probably took you just about as long to figure that one out. But how would you like to know a different method for doing 8 times 7, which takes far longer, but is fun and cool because it was introduced in the 1500s in one of the first English language textbooks on arithmetic. Yes, we're going back to 1543, and this textbook called The Ground of Arts by Robert Record was introduced in London. This is one of the first English language arithmetic textbooks and very, very popular, and it teaches all sorts of cool bits of arithmetic. And I was reading through it with some difficulty, admittedly, and it introduced a cute little method for one-digit multiplication. So multiplying two one-digit numbers together, it gave this funny little method I'd like to show you. Robert Record perhaps is not a name you've heard before, but he is in fact the guy who introduced the equals sign. So hey, we owe a lot to the man. Now let's talk about this multiplication method. The book was uh, written in the form of a dialogue, so it was a uh, master and a student discussing the methods, and it made for a great tool for self-study when you can read the content in that way. Now, the first example presented in the book for this multiplication is 8 times 7, which is why I began with that. And the method works like this. We would take the two numbers to be multiplied and write them on top of each other. So there's 8 and there's 7. Then, from each number, we should draw a straight diagonal line, just like that. Now, across from the 8 at the end of this line, we should put how much of um, 10 is missing from 8. I'm trying to kind of word it in the language of the book. So that would be 2. And then down here, we put how much of 10 is missing from 7. Well, the answer would be 3. And then underneath this horizontal line, we're going to get our answer. Look at these two numbers here on the right. We should just multiply those together, and the idea is that you know what their product is because they're teensy numbers. 2 times 3 is 6, so we put that down there. And now, where, do, where are we going to get that 5 from? Well, the other step is to choose either number, 8 or 7, and subtract from it the number on the other side of the line. So I could say, well, 8 minus 3 is 5. Or I could say, well, 7 minus 2 is 5. Either way, I get the correct digit there of 5 for my final answer of 56. Now, when we talk about old mathematics, often a lot of time is spent discussing ancient things. So in that sort of context, 1543 might seem fairly modern. I mean, it would only be another few short centuries before calculus was invented. But even at this time, negative numbers were not super accepted and, and common. So uh, Robert Record in his textbook talking about this method, he actually takes the trouble to point out, well, you know, what if we have something like three times four? And then if you try to use the method in this situation, like we just did, you end up with this situation where you have to take 7 away from 4, or 6 away from 3. In either case, there's not enough to take away, right? You can't take 6 away from 3, 3 is too small. You can't take 7 away from 4, 4 is too small. So, what does he say of these situations with these tiny numbers? Well, he says for the tiny numbers, you know, even a small child can multiply those, so it doesn't really matter. Of course, 3 times 4 is 12. We don't need any fancy tricks for that. 8 times 7, on the other hand, that is some... Um you know, that's serious business, and that's when we have to bust out this sort of uh, arrangement. Of course, from a modern lens where we generally just memorize all the way up through the 12s or 15s on a multiplication table to just be able to look at a pair of numbers and know the product by sight, the idea of treating 8 times 7 so differently from 3 times 4, one is to be memorized and the other computed by this 
relatively laborious method, it's a pretty funny idea. Now, to make sure you understand Robert Record's beautiful method for multiplication, let's do one more example, 9 and 7, let's say, and then we'll uh, go through a little justification of why this actually works. So, we've got 9 times 7, these numbers are pretty big, so we definitely need to bust out some cool tricks here. Down here, we'll put how much of 10 is missing from 7, which is 3, and then up here, put how much of 10 is missing from 9. The answer, of course, is 1. All right, draw our little horizontal line, multiply these two numbers together, even a small child can do it, it's 3. And then over here on the left, pick either 9 and 3 or 7 and 1, and do the subtraction. Say we take 3 from 9, we get 6. If, on the other hand, we were to take 1 from 7, we would also get 6. And, of course, arrive at the correct answer, 9 times 7 is 63. All right, why don't we bust out some algebra and see why the heck this actually works? Now, while the method is introduced for single-digit multiplication, and it's advised to not even bother using the tiny numbers because it results in you know, the negative situation, which we don't really want to deal with. In justifying this method, we'll actually see that it works for any two numbers, no matter how big or small they are. So let's say we have A and we're multiplying it by B using this method. Then let's write what number is going to go in each position. Up here, we would put how much of 10 is missing from A. In other words, we would put 10 minus A. Down here, we would put 10 minus B, and then we draw our horizontal line, and the way the product ends up getting computed is by multiplying these two numbers together. So let's just do the distribution now. That would be 10 times 10, which is 100, 10 times minus B, which is minus 10B, 10 times minus A, which is minus 10A, and minus A times minus B, which is plus A. B. And then to this, we are adding something that's in the tens place, which means we're basically computing a digit and multiplying it by 10 and adding it. Now that's done via subtraction. So we take 10 minus B away from A, or we take 10 minus A away from B. Either way, it would be the same thing. And then we multiply that by 10. If we say take 10 minus B away from A, then we would have A minus 10 and plus B. And because this is in the tens place, it's being multiplied by 10. And so this is what we're looking at. All we have to do now is some simplification and we'll see that in fact the method works. Let's distribute on the left. That's going to give us 10A minus 100 plus 10B. And then writing out the rest of what's in these parentheses, we have plus 100 minus 10B minus 10A plus AB. And then you can see everything that happens here, 10A minus 10A, 10B minus 10B, minus 100 plus 100, you see that we're left with the product as desired, A times B. Clearly, this method works with any two numbers. Even if we were to stick to using the single digits that the method was intended for, like 6 times 7, you still encounter situations that at least were not immediately mentioned when the method was introduced in the textbook. If we apply the method to 6 times 7, well, how much of 10 is missing from 6? That would be 4. And then down here, how much of 10 is missing from 7? It would be 3. But then you can see when we multiply these numbers 4 times 3, we don't get a 1's digit, we get 12. Now the method still works, but you can see the technique that we end up using just is subtly different here because 4 times 3 isn't giving us a single digit in the 1's place. So then over here, when we do 6 minus 3 or 7 minus 4, that just doesn't give us our 10's digit. We really have to consider addition here. What we're doing is, let's say 7 minus 4 is 3, we then have to hit that with a factor of 10 and then add these two things. That's really what you have to do, and that's what will make this method work in general. And that gives us our correct answer, 6 times 7 is 42. All right, one more. Let's push this method to the absolute breaking point. Say we want to multiply 24 
by 17. And we want to do this using Robert Records' funny little method from 1543. Well, we can do it the same way as before. How much of 10 is missing from 24? Well, the answer is negative 14. And down here, the answer is negative 7. All right, then we just have to do negative 14 times negative 7. Even a child can do that. That is 98. And then we can either do 24 minus negative 7, which is 31, or 17 minus negative 14, which is 31. Hit that with a factor of 10, and we just need to add that to 98. So either way, it's 31 times 10, so 310, plus 98, and thus we get our correct answer of 408. And why don't we just check that on a modern device? I will turn on my Casio calculator here. What was it? 24 times 17, 24 times 17, and there you go, 408. Funnily enough, even though the method was introduced for single digit multiplication, this is a problem with two digits where someone might actually find it useful. Sure, it's probably not the most practical algorithm for multiplying these two numbers together, but you might not want to multiply these in your head, and this gets the job done and does break it down into some slightly more manageable steps. If I were trying to do 24 times 17, I would keep it in my head. I would note that, let me just write this in a different color, break it down into factors, right? So I would note that 24 is equal to 8 times 3, and 8 is 2 cubed. So we could actually just double 17 3 times and then multiply it by 3. If we double 17 once, we get 34. Double it again, you get 68. Double it again, and you get 136. And then multiply that by 3 to get 408. But that's a little taste of some old mathematics from a textbook from 1543. And again, this was a very, very popular textbook on arithmetic. I'll leave a link in the description to uh, the book on Amazon if you want to buy it, but I was reading it on Google Books, so I'll try to leave a link to that as well. It seems like you could just read the whole thing for free. Um, it's a little tough to read. It's, you know, it's like scanned pages and they're all splotchy and the old form of writing is, is pretty tough to read. I was getting a little bit of a head so I had to stop after the multiplication section. <laughs> but hey, that was fun. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. Fade from my fate, twisting to escape this. Climbing out of my, my, my wrist if you can break it. Breaking in my past, I'm making it up fast. So slow down, give me the time so I can fake it. Erase it to the words and just how I say shit. And let me speak my poetry to your face. It's not in the mid if you ain't listening. Not infinite if you ain't really in the